Good morning. Friends, I want to welcome all of you to, uh, to Good Shepherd. Uh, today is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. I want to welcome our baptismal family, all of our guests, and our visitors. Uh, we're blessed this morning to have uh, some of our teen, high school youth uh, singing and helping lead our worship. And um, let me just say, there are, I think all of us in life have people who walk into our life at the right time. Uh, I would say our uh, preacher today is one of those people who I met this year and I think walked into my life at the right time. So Pastor Roy Howard uh, was a longtime pastor at uh, St. Mark's in St. St. Mark's Presbyterian in North Bethesda. Roy does a lot of coaching and uh, consulting work with uh, the larger church. Uh, and he'll be offering the message for us today. So, Roy, thank you. I hope you'll go out of your way to welcome he and his wife, Claudia. And uh, they'll also be at the baseball game today, so uh, some of you will get a more personal chance to meet him today. Um, would you please stand? Friends, we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is our rock and our fortress, our refuge and strength. Let me just say one thing right here at this point. We have a, a probably a 10-minute stretch of standing, so I'm just going to say stand as you're able, sit as you want, okay, at any point here. Let's sing. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you.
Let us pray. Jesus, in this light and this life, all of us can get bent out of shape, wounded physically, spiritually, or emotionally. Yet at all times you see and know what we need. Draw near to us and lift us up that we might be restored. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, bring the day of peace, the end of war, violence, oppression, abusive speech, and the failure to cooperate. Foster new dialogues that the chasms that separate some in our world might be overcome. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we give thanks for those who work to promote safety in every community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Jesus, we pray for all those who follow your ways of justice and mercy and loving kindness. Let your church be a living reflection of your ways, not a shallow imitation. Bless these, this congregation with boldness and enable us to pour out your love in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we pray for teachers, administrators, and all who work in our schools. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we pray for those struggling to pay for medications, their rent, or the basic necessities of life. Help those with abundance to discover the power of sharing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we pray for communities impacted by national, natural disasters. Send aid and supportive witnesses to restore, renew, and bring hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we give thanks for the ministry of the Montgomery Men's Shelter 
in this community and for all those who support it. Lord, in your mercy. Dearest Heavenly Father, grant healing and wholeness to all, but especially to these folks. Hans Bornebrook, Kate Combs, Patricia Lynch, Aaron Lynch, Sandra Thompson, Lila Rays, Debbie Reamer, Yvonne Bielan, Sharon Chu, Lois Culler, Robert Edwards, Jose Flores, Emily Hale, Carolyn Holland, Miles Lindsay, L Heather Light, Blake Lipton, Jim Lucas, Todd and Samantha Luther, Hilda Mahoney, Kathy Malmberg, Wendy Such Kaiser, Claire Wernley, and Mabel Wula, and all those we name in our hearts and our minds now. Comfort the family of Bob McGuire. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Gave you a little endurance test there. Friends, I uh, do want to welcome all of you to Good Shepherd, especially those online. If you would uh, just take a moment to, uh, to, to check in, let us know you're worshiping with us. That's uh, really appreciated. Uh, you certainly uh, heard Margie uh, mention Bob McGuire in the prayers today. Uh, Bob's memorial service will be Friday at 5 o'clock. Uh, there will be an email to the congregation tomorrow, uh, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, we encourage you to support uh, Shannon and Patrick and Lisa in the days ahead. Uh, I'm asked to remind you that the Montgomery Men's Shelter needs some, uh, we have some gaps and really could use some help this week. So if you're uh, able to, uh, to, to log on and uh, get signed up for some additional items, that would be greatly appreciated. It's a very important ministry of the church. And the uh, shelter has expanded in recent days to, uh, to a year-round larger number. So our uh, witness year-round really does matter. Today is the Frederick Keys picnic. I know Mike was in the lobby today handing out tickets for those who had ordered them. Mike is in the back. Did you get rid of all of them? So, yes, so if you uh, would like to still go, go see Mike. Uh, and if you uh, haven't picked up your tickets and can't do it this morning, they'll be at will call. Uh, Sunday worship, we are going to need some help this fall. I want to just encourage you, if you're interested in reading, serving communion, being a greeter, uh, let Mary Jo know so we can get you signed up quickly. Uh, we celebrate uh, Alex Stahl, member of Good Shepherd, uh, graduated from United Lutheran Seminary. Last Sunday was called to serve the congregation at Advent Lutheran in Arlington. Alex's ordination will be next Saturday, and uh, we uh, encourage your prayers and certainly welcome you to, uh, to come in person to celebrate. Next Sunday is our backpack blessing service. Uh, we'll invite the kids uh, forward uh, next week for a blessing during the service. We also have a project, uh, a service project immediately following the service that uh, the kids would be well, kids and parents would be welcome to attend. And lastly, our new Wednesday series starting in September, which will include a discussion, is called uh, Sabbath as Resistance, Saying No in a Culture of Now, based on just a, a fabulous book by one of the world's leading Old Testament scholars, uh, Walter Brueggemann. With that, let's continue with our reading. As we read scripture today, let us pray for God's inspiration. Almighty God, you know us better than we know ourselves. By your word, give us wisdom. By your spirit, grant us healing. And set us free to serve you with love. We ask this through the one who heals in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. The reading is from Hebrews, the 12th chapter. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. 
If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to the God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape, when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At the time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates removal of what is shaken. That is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For indeed, our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning to everyone worshiping here and everyone worshiping at home. I just want to, I'm Francis Fultz, since we have a few visitors here, I'm the Minister of Christian Education. Um, next week, the Backpack Sunday, I'm very excited because, just a moment's announcement, it's our first time in three years being back doing it in the church service, so it's going to be a big deal. Look at the pictures on your postcards, family, because it is adorable looking at pictures, you're going to get them in the mail this week of kids that are three years ago, absolutely adorable. But we've done blessings outside that next week, we will be doing it as part of the service and giving you crosses for your backpacks, preschoolers, even teachers. We love when teachers come up and want their backpacks blessed too. I'm looking at you, Jenny. Uh, <laughs> and, um, then we're doing three service projects downstairs. We're gonna be making 200 lunches for the men's shelter. We're making 216, um, backpacks for refugees filled with school supplies. That's how many backpacks I have, so that's an odd number. And 70 um, welcome bags for the weekday preschool. So we have a lot of projects. It's gonna be a fun week, and I'm hoping to see a lot of you. So let's do the children's message. This is Adele, world phenom, great singer, songwriter. How many of you are Adele fans? Oh, we have a bunch of them here. Well, this next slide is one of the biggest fans that you will ever find of Adele, right there, that guy, especially when he was a teenage. Teenage Drew Sonnenberg, my son, would play Adele over and over and over and over again. We got him headphones, still liked it better, just being played. At the age of 17, Drew went with his dear friend Bishop Layla to hear, you saw a picture of them going to the concert, Adele sing in person at the Verizon Center in Washington, D.C. It was a sold out concert with over 20,000 people there. Drew was so excited that um, when Adele walked onto the stage, he just was overcome with emotion. And the story is, and they both swear to it, Bishop Layla and um, Drew swear to this day, that Adele looked out over those 20,000 people, saw Drew, locked eyes with Drew, <laughs> and was thrilled at this teary-eyed, excited boy, and waved to him. <laughs> That's the story. They swear to it. I, pretty incredible and great. 
In our gospel story today, the Jesus story that we're going to read in just a moment, Jesus is teaching to a crowd in the synagogue. And a synagogue is like the church for the Jewish people. And we remember Jesus was Jewish, so they're worshiping. And Jesus is preaching to this crowd of people, and Jesus sees one person looks at her, he sees this specific woman that has been bent over for 18 years. Now it's important to remember that the Jesus story was written in another language in Greek. And the Greek word uh, oraho, oh, oraho doesn't mean just seeing with your eyes. It means seeing that person completely. Jesus looked at this woman and he understood immediately her story, her pain that she had been carrying for 18 years. He saw everything about her. Jesus does something more amazing than look at her and wave. Jesus actually calls to the woman to come to him. And then Jesus says, woman, you are set free from your ailment, meaning Jesus sets her free from her sickness, her troubles, her weaknesses. And after 18 years of pain, she is healed and she praises God. One of the reasons that we read the Bible is to understand God. And this Jesus story is so great because it teaches us that God sees us sees all of us and understands our troubles and that God calls us to him. And when we go to God, we can be freed from the pain and the anger and the sickness and troubles that have been weighing us down. Let us pray. Dear God, you see us. You call to us. We come to you with our problems and troubles, and we praise you for the strength and healing that you bring. Amen. Well, good morning, Good Shepherd Church. Peter Schmidt, Director of Music here. I'm feeling very blessed this morning to see so many of you here worshiping. I sense a great spirit in this place, so thank you for that. I'm particularly grateful this morning for these wonderful singers that you see to my left, these high schoolers who are sharing their musical gifts with us today in leadership. Um, I just wanna point them out. This is Jacob Rogers here on the end, followed by Dylan Jones and Katie Stouterman and Katie Stout and Lydia Jones there on the end. So guys, thank you. When you're here sharing your gifts like this, it inspires us to want to do more with, with the gifts that God has given us. So thanks so much for being here and leading us in this new song that we're going to learn called All Consuming Fire. If you will stand as you're able, we'll prepare to, to hear God's gospel uh, with this song that will be led by our kids. So please sing along as soon as you're able. You'll find the music in the bullet. Seven. 
it all consuming fire our god is it all consuming fire yeah our god is it all consuming fire our god is it all consuming fire I just want to begin by saying thank you. Thank you to the musicians. Mm, that was wonderful. Thank you to the congregation. Um, I always thought when I was a pastor that, that it was great when the guest came in because it made the light shine so much brighter on the resident pastor. So uh, I know that'll be true today. Those of you who came in a little bit late, I am not the resident pastor. I'm a guest and I'm blessed to be here for that reason. I can't, I can't think of a more uh, wonderful day, perhaps you can, but I, I, I can't really worship, baptism, Eucharist, and baseball, and, and, and food, it kind of, wow, that, that all, all, all goes together. So in the 13th chapter of Luke's gospel, he tells us that Jesus was teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath. And there appeared to him a woman, a woman who was, had a spirit that kept her crippled for 18 years. She was bent over, bent over so that she was quite really unable to stand up straight. As Francis told us, Jesus looked at her and then he called her to come over to him. And when she came over, Jesus said, woman, you are set free from your ailment. And when he put his hands upon her, laid his hands upon her, she stood up straight and began praising God. Just like that. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant that Jesus had cured her on the Sabbath, kept saying, there are six days that are allocated for work come on one of those days to be cured, not on the Sabbath day. But again, Jesus looked at him and said, you hypocrites, does not one of you, does not each one of you untie your ox or your donkey and lead it over to get water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, who has been bound by Satan for 18 long years, deserve to be healed, freed from her bondage on the Sabbath? And when Jesus said this, all of his opponents, all of them, were put to shame. But the entire crowd was rejoicing at the wonderful things that Jesus was doing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise and may God who, you may be seated, and may God who is rich in mercy grant us insight into this gospel. And with that insight, faith, and especially courage for the living of these days. And God's people said, Let's think about this woman. She's been bent over for 18 years, not a week or two, 18 years, resigned to a life in which she will always, always be referred to as that poor handicapped woman. Remember her? 
18 years is a long time to be looking down at the dirt, straining awkwardly to look around, to look ahead, to look around the person in front of you coming toward you, bent over, staring at the dirt, the ground, never quite able to stand up straight. Imagine that. Last month, I walked all over the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, nearly 50 miles up and down over gorgeous landscapes, gazing upon bright blue skies every single day, glittering stars at night with my family. I looked around in every direction, swiveling my head with ease to see moose, elk, gazing in meadows, big bighorn sheep on rocks, waterfalls cascading over glacier lakes, some over 12,000 feet. I even climbed right up to one, right over a place called Sky Pond. I'm pretty sure that some of you have been to Sky Pond, and there I stood, my spine straight up, tingling with wonder, and in a word, blessed to be alive and standing on both feet, arms up. So it's hard for me to imagine this woman bent over for 18 years. Did she have severe arthritis as some have suggested? Perhaps. Whatever it is, she seems to be resigned to live with it forever. She doesn't even ask for help on the day when Jesus is teaching. Maybe, perhaps, she said to herself with a sigh, it is, well, it just is what it is. It is what it is, and I've had it for 18 years, just is what it is. This saying bothers me. It bothers me a lot, actually. It is what it is, but is it the way that things are supposed to be? It is what it is is not something that Jesus accepts without asking anyone's permission, including the bent over woman. He transforms it is what it is into it shall be what it should be. And the bent over woman now stands up straight, praising God with all of her strength. I'd love to hear the song of praise. I'd love to hear the song of praise that inter erupted from her with unbounded joy. For the first time in 18 years, she's singing. You're gonna Can hear you it. imagine? I'm so happy. Woo, something to, something to look forward to. And guess what? The leader of the synagogue is furious. Seriously? This seems crazy to us, and, and perhaps in the end it is. But here's where we need, I think, to proceed a little bit slowly. It's easy to gang up on the synagogue leader offering our collective indignation that he insists on following the rules. But let's, let's go a little bit deeper. Many of us in this sanctuary, I'm pretty sure, actually know the burden of keeping organizational rules. There's always someone asking for an exception. If the Sabbath, for instance, is to be taken seriously, with all of its spiritual disciplines that are designed to craft a holy life in the world, what good is it to make exceptions at every turn? The orthodox practice of keeping Sabbath actually allows for healing rituals under certain life-threatening circumstances, and this is this is not one of them. Remember, 18 long years. 
my mentor and colleague, Ron Byers, points out that this woman has been in, in, afflicted for that long without saying a word. Could Jesus not wait one more day? She's not dying. So what makes her the exception to the law? Rules are rules, goes the answer, no exceptions. If we make an exception for you, then what about the next person that comes along? How many of us have ever heard that? How many of us have ever said that? No exceptions, nothing. But isn't it interesting, my friend Ron Byers asked, that rules mean one thing to the enforcer and quite another to the one upon whom the rule lands? The leader of the synagogue enforces the law rightly. We get that, s sort of. But what about the bent over woman upon whom the rule falls? No exceptions. She's the one, she's the one, as Francis pointed out, that gets Jesus' attention. And isn't that the clue for the followers of Jesus? But let's, let's be honest, not that we would be otherwise. But let's be honest, it's, it's really easy to chant the hip bumper sticker, rules are meant to be broken. But say that to the Benedictine monks who have been following the rule of St. Benedict since the sixth century without exception. It has stood the test of time quite nicely and still is without exception. So there's a deeper discernment that's required here to hear the gospel. Rules, including Sabbath rules, are meant to enhance or maybe even protect our lives. And when they don't do that, then something is awry. I think more personally, it may be helpful to ask yourself, where do you land in this story? If closer to the one who has to uphold rules in your life, what's the purpose for the rule that you are vowed to uphold? Are you happy? Are you really happy knowing that you made the no exception rule stick again, even in the face of obvious suffering and an obvious exception? Are you truly satisfied? Are you any closer to your neighbor? And probably even harder, do you feel any shame at the end of the day as you tuck in for the night that you've kept all the rules and made sure everybody else did also. Perhaps because there's somebody above you telling you to keep all the rules and all the way down it goes. But maybe some of you actually can find yourself closer to the bent over woman. What keeps you now from asking for your own healing? that has bent you over, invisibly perhaps, but bent you over for so many years. Is there any disabling condition you have accepted saying, well, it is what it is. Can't do anything about it, it just is. But what if it is is not what you want it to be? What if it is, is not what's helping you to flourish as a beloved of God. What would happen if you took a lesson from Rosa Parks, refusing to accept her position at the back of the bus, refusing to go along with what is? Just something to consider. It is what it is, is not the way that Jesus looks at our lives or the world itself. 
Jesus always leans toward the bent over ones, the broken hearted ones, the afflicted ones. And in his presence, the lame walk, the blind see, the bent over rise up and praise God. Jesus is the presence of God and in, in his ministry, we can see a glimpse of what God intends for every single one of us. Nothing can undermine the healing that Jesus intends. <clears throat> but finally, there are those of us in the crowd that gaze upon Jesus doing the unimaginable. And so I would ask you, is your heart singing when you witness Jesus bringing joy to others, to the sorrowful, to the healing, to the hopeless? Jesus is the one who breaks all the rules for the sake of giving life to someone else. The rule breaker for the sake of life itself. And I would ask of the church, are you listening? What is it that makes your heart sing? What is it that makes your heart, your life, come alive and flourish for the sake of your neighbor. This is the possibility. It's, a, it's the actual calling that's always set before us. Whenever we hear it, it is what it is. There arises a different question. Is it the way that it should be? You're set free. You're set free, Jesus said to the woman, and the crowd rejoiced at the wonderful things that he was doing. And the church said, Amen. And now to the one who is able to do far more than we can ask or think or even imagine, to God be the glory now and forever. Amen. Come forward, or fa families. And we invite the congregation to be an active part of the responses here, so uh, please uh, follow along. We celebrate this baptism in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Holy baptism is God's gift to us in this sacrament. We are welcome into the body of Christ, the church. We become part of the family of God. God will take water and add to it the power of the word of God. Baptism is a rebirth, a new life in Christ. Let us read the words of Jesus together. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Today you are responding to the command of Jesus and the love of God. Baptism is a beautiful picture of the grace of God, and we rejoice with you on this special day. I ask all of you, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living. And do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. I ask you, parents and sponsors, will you faithfully bring Elena and Juliet to worship? Teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creeds, and the Ten Commandments. Place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for their instruction in the Christian faith. If so, say, we will. We will. Martin Luther says, Baptism is not water only, but it is water used together with God's Word and by God's command. God has rescued us through this washing and cleansing, which gives us new birth and life. Please present these children of God for holy <laughs> baptism. How do you guys go? We present Elena Marie Barbaro for the sacrament of holy baptism. We present Juliet Florence Zimmerman for the sacrament of holy baptism. Okay. <laughs> I guess you get to go first. <laughs> All right, we'll do this gently here. Elena, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just a little bit. Juliet, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. You've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Let's see. We'll do big brother here. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. To our sponsors, you're making a commitment to surround these children with your love and prayers and do all you can to help the parents raise them in the Christian faith. Will you pray for them, love them, teach them the Word of God, and stand with them in joy and sorrow? If so, say yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. And friends, today we receive these children of God to be part of this Christian community. Uh, what is your response to these new children of God? We welcome you and promise to pray for you and show our love for you in the years. I invite the congregation to stand as you're able. And let's, let's pray together. God, you make light to shine in the darkness. You allow new life to spring out of old. We are thankful that you accept these children as your own. We are grateful for the gift of grace which accepts us as we are. May these your children grow in faith and always know they are part of your family and you are their loving God. May each of us know the joy of abundant life in Christ. Remember this special day when water joined the word and touched our spirits. We give thanks to God for these sisters in faith, Elena and Juliet. How about a round of applause for them? <laughs> God, Peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take a few moments to greet one another. Friends, you may be seated. Mindful of the generosity of God and the awareness that all we have has been given, let us respond with the offerings of our lives and labor. Uh, there's instructions in the bullet now to offer a gift to support the, the mission and the outreach of Good Shepherd, but uh, let us pray to get. Loving God, we rejoice that our lives are already consecrated by you, inspired by the knowledge of your love, giving thanks for the gifts you offer us each day. We pray that these offerings of our lives may further your kingdom on earth. Amen. Surrender, lay down. 
freeway. Remember your love has broken all my chains. What you have finished cannot be undone. The work of the cross was more
Right after the Lord's Prayer, I will uh, commune those who uh, have communion cups in your seats, as well as those who are worshiping with us online. Uh, and then uh, after that, the uh, ushers will invite uh, all of you forward. Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life, and so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending The night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thanks be to God. And for those in your seats, uh, communing in your seats, and those at home, the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Please be seated.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the blessing of God, like a mother's love, sustain you. May the peace of God, like a strong castle, protect you. May the hope of God, like a consuming fire, enlighten you this day and forevermore. Amen. peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.